Yeah, nice. Uh, so this was our last time. How did that happen? <laughs> I think this is not what we looked at, was it? Uh, but I can see a picture, no? I can see a familiar picture we looked at uh, attacking on the queen side, right? And this uh, obviously white to move. Yeah, I don't know what happened with this. I, I can't really picture. I remember the game so so. Um, I remember the game. The game was something like this, right? He was playing uh, the French advance, and they played something like that. Is that is that correct? Or he played ninety seven first? Honestly, I don't really remember this game anymore. So, and anyone remembers it? Was it like that? It was like that, right? No, it was not the Wesley So. This was the game with uh, uh, Seturaman with the white pieces. So his game went something like I can bring it up, of course, also. But I, I wasn't going to talk about it too much. But it was uh, something like he, he fianchetto, and then there was uh, check on a four and so on. Um, yeah, if you really like, I, I can of course bring it up again. If if you really want to see it again, we can uh, we can look it up very very quickly. This was the game, right? Yeah. All right. I'll bring it up in just one moment here okay let's see if i can get this right this is what we looked at last time i wasn't here oh, I see. Round on all right so this was the game we looked at last time uh, everyone remembers black played a strange system in the french advance with bishop a6 we had some key moments in this game uh, this was a nice move by white of course trying to soften up the uh, black uh, queen side we're attacking from the queen side and uh, this was maybe the most important moment in the game, right? At this point. So I, I said that Black should have taken it this way. In the game, they took like that. And then we noticed together that only computer-like uh, precision would allow Black to save this game. That's what we saw. So I think in any case, just to make uh, sure that everybody remembers, we should bring up some moves here. So I'll give you 30 seconds. Let's see if you can remember what you looked at last time, all right? So how did the Indian Grandmaster exploit uh, his leading development? How did he manage to open up the game? All right, Yugoslavian Berserker, we have a winner here. I think a kind King Sam, if you play that, maybe you give me a chance to play B5, right? A tactical Magician and GM, I think I could play maybe Queen D4 there, right? I could, or Queen, no, Queen A5, that's what we concluded last time. Okay, we have more winners. Ryan, remember this, Skilled Saber, Inari. Awesome, Owen. All right, uh, Yugoslavian, you're the fastest one here. So what's happened here? What did he play? The first move is very obvious, no? We are definitely not materialists. We said that if you play a move like this, then unfortunately you have not understood the logic of this position. We should try to attack while we have a chance. If we play something like this, maybe Black can play some, some interfering move. I don't know, like Queen D4, or, or maybe they can just develop more quickly as in the game. I think rather that's the case. So knight c3, of course, that's what we should play. And when black takes this pawn, queen a4, exactly. So that we win a tempo by hitting the knight. And here we had several moves, but this is what Yugoslavian Berserker is saying. And that's what Sethuraman played also, because he noticed that if bishop f4, it was not queen d4 as I thought in the first place, because we saw this last time and somebody said queen a6. It was this that is the best move here, of course, for black. So that. We try to trade off queens and we don't let them play queen a6. Yeah, small details, no? Small details. Exactly, Sartha, queen a5. Yeah, I also forgot. <laughs> so that's how the game went. But Yugoslavia Berserko did not forget. Knight b5, that's what played in the game. We're hitting black where it hurts them the most. You can see that in this game there were almost no moves on the king side or at black's king side. It was not interesting for black, for white in this game. So they, they are facing this threat. They played queen b8. And one last move here by Yugoslavia Berserker, F, Bishop F4, of course. And if E5, we could see that it's all, already a complete disaster for Black. But that's not in the right spirit, uh, Yugoslavian. <laughs> you have to play in the spirit of this position, right? Ryan says Bishop takes E5. Of course, of course. That's how we do it, right? Because if Queen takes, we have rookie one. And if Knight takes, yeah, we have a bunch of interesting moves here, starting with Knight D6 check. This looks very difficult for black to survive or maybe like aha you can take it and bring in the rooks and so on so yeah that was from last time's class so we talked about the fact that sometimes we have to attack on the queen side and i think it's especially talking about this diagonal 
the, with the light squares. That's where we can attack very heavily in some structures and so on. But all right, we are done with that topic. We should now continue. And today's topic, it's what I call exactly, Sartak, you have read the, the planification. We will have a look at provocation. So what do I mean with provocation? Well, before I bring up the example, uh, provocation, it's basically, in, in my way of thinking, it's uh, when we uh, force uh, our opponent to make an unwanted move, okay? An unwanted move. I mean, unwanted move for, for them. And typically, uh, we use we use uh, our pieces, I mean, queen, uh, knight, rook, and bishop, to force uh, pawn moves, all right? Because pawn moves, these are the moves that they are not uh, reversible. They are irreversible, I mean, you cannot play them back, you cannot return them, so they have a bigger impact on the battle, so to speak. So, All right, let's get going. Let's take our first example. Some of you have probably seen this example, but I think it's a nice example to start because it shows you perfectly what this is about. It's from the recent tournament, which was played in uh, Tata Steel. Yeah, many of you have seen this, so I won't uh, take too much time with this. Don't send a move, don't send a move, please. Don't do that. Don't, uh, uh, <laughs> don't destroy the class, okay? Uh, let everybody have a try at this. Let's see if you can find what Ragananda found in this uh, game. All right, that, that's it. I'll give you just one minute. Try to find a way in which Black should continue here. Don't send moves. Take your time. Uh, I'm sorry, Elephant, Sartak, pa Patriots, and Yugoslavian. Ragananda did not play your move. He played something else. Okay? You need to take more time. This is not some kind of list games where you should tell me the move in one second. No. If you play that move, I can tell you what would happen. I would play b4, all right? b4, and I would plant a knight on c5. From c5, I will bring that knight to e4. And from e4, I will bring that knight to f6, all right? Michael, you got it. Congratulations. We have a first winner here. All right. So this was difficult. I thought you were you guys were looking at those games, uh, the Tata Steel games. I thought everybody was checking those games. Or maybe you're checking other tournaments. But uh, yeah, I for sure, I, I had my eyes on the Tata Steel tournaments. Many interesting games, both in the main group and in the uh, Masters group or in the Challenges group. It was also very interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm very sorry, but majority here missed the first move. Okay, we have some people who got the second move. But if you play that, the Kind King Sam, Crash Tactical, Inari, Metsha, Pikachu, JM, Chess, Chess Sword, it's going to be very risky. Only one winner, only Michael found this, so please go ahead, Michael. Let everybody know what Pragananda and you have noticed here. Bishop G4, that's the typical provocation move. Why do we play that? Well, it looks like some kind of tactical move. What we're doing here, of course, we're trying to deflect the White Queen from one of its defensive functions. White is forced to play f3. That's easy to see. And now Pragananda played bishop d7. Why is he doing that? Well, he would like to push d4. And for that to work, first we should dislodge the knight, after which we are ready to play the key move. Please notice the function. The function of bishop g4 was to provoke f3, right? So that we can play this move with check. If it was not with check, definitely Carlson would take this pawn with the knight and be very happy the knight would go to f6. But now he's in check, so he has to move the king. He played, I think, king h2. Or king h1, maybe he played. Yeah, and now we go d4, exactly. We can go d4. We're just in time to take that pawn. And yeah, no chance for white to play. Uh, also, if they play, we have some noise here. Uh, all right. We have some noise. If uh, king h1, you could also play in the same way, right, uh, Michael? Exactly. Michael is playing out the moves. Michael is not afraid of anything. You can see that there are no dangerous uh, discovered attacks here. So, yeah, nice that uh, nobody knew about this almost. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for you because you're learning then. You're learning new stuff here. So let's see if we can understand this together. Uh, Bishop g4 is what Black played in the game. Yeah, thanks, uh, Michael. Great work. If he had played Bishop d7 straight away, Carlson would play knight c3, attacking this pawn on d5. Also, don't forget that white is actually pawn up in this position. I didn't tell you about the material here, but uh, you can check that yourself. This would be troublesome for white, for, for black, sorry, because if d4, uh, the pawn is just 
hanging, right? I don't have time to, to prepare because the pawn is in the air. And if I play something like that, most probably anyone, what would white play here? Which move do you like with white? Anyone? Queen d4, exactly, Sartak. I'm, I have the same opinion. Fantastic square for the queen, perfect blockade and so on. So we don't have time for that. Some people are saying d4. I understand the idea, of course, you are clearing a path for your queen and so on. You don't let me play queen d4. Unfortunately, I have d4, as I was telling you. And no matter where you put your queen, it's up to you guys where you want to put the queen, but I will put my knight on c5. Once the knight is on c5, I'm definitely trying to bring it further to e4 at some point. Maybe not now when the pawn is hanging, but I can do that later, right? So this is not so nice for, for black to play. Finally, those of you who said bishop g4 and bishop takes h5, I'm afraid that's a little too materialistic. You could play it, but we could use here uh, Sarthak's idea. We could play b4. Please notice that no checking of option this time and we can put the queen on d4 so black got back their pawn but you can see that white has several interesting ideas here one would be to just go back with a knight another one would be to go to c5 maybe from there you can think of some other pattern uh, other path i mean for the knight uh, so okay i tried d4 the first time i saw bishop d4 but i didn't play it i didn't have time yeah i know i, I gave you just one minute now that's a little time but that's because i would like you to see several examples right not just uh, one example but uh, several so, so that's uh, why i speed it up a little so i hope everybody understands what this uh, was about else we will have a second chance we're learning now in chessable fashion all right we're learning in chessable fashion here we go you get 30 seconds yeah that's very good for white i agree Sartek. so it's better to play as in the game all right Two winners so far, Michael, JM Chess, Ryan, Yugoslavian, Bosorko, Chess Art, Connor, Sarthak, Gordon, Skilled, Saber. Aha. Some people want to give check on move three. Uh, oh, you gave check there instead. Yeah, that's a technical mistake, GM and Crush and Pan King Sam. You shouldn't play that, I think, for a good reason. Um, okay, JM Chess, you can, you can play it out just to see that. We're all on the same page. JM Chess will play it out. Bishop d4, provoking absolutely only move here. F3. And after that, we're ready to challenge this knight. And now we get one of these two squares. Please notice that JM Chess picks the c5 square. The reason is that after um, d4, we are covering this square, right? So black can take this. Yeah, in the game, by the way, Carson played rook e4. And there was a crazy end game here with, I think, three or four queens on the board. But we won't look at that today, right? There is a very interesting endgame for those of you who, who like spectacular endgames. You should check that game out. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was a draw in the end. It was a draw. Pragananda held the draw. Uh, he was under some pressure, but yeah, Carson couldn't win. So just for the record, guys, if you play bishop here and you give check on b6, it's like, um, yeah, what can I say? Comparative mistake. You have two moves which are similar, right? Two moves which are similar. We should compare them. If you play this... I think I would put my king here this time. And uh, yeah, I'll take that pawn next turn. Or if you play d4, I'll play knight d5. This makes a huge difference, right? So I hope you're convinced, those of you who said queen c5 check, uh, queen b6 check, I hope you're convinced that it's actually better to put the queen on uh, c5. I mean, we should not forget that white's, black's king is weak also. So if you play like this and you take the pawn, for example, I would take on d5 and your king is in trouble here. So. I don't know if anyone sees some tactic here, but I, I don't see it. I mean, I can give check and I think this guy is falling. Now, so can we go through it really quick? And some other day, skill saber. It's a very, very entertaining endgame, but uh, I would like to focus on the topic now. I would like to focus on the topic of provocation. So this is the first very, very simple example of how we can use provocation. We would like to force a move from white, which they definitely don't want to play in this case, the move. Uh, F3, right? Okay, let me travel back in time. Let's go back to the year 1992. That was more than 30 years ago. Um, different, you know, different times. Uh, no stockfish, uh, electronic uh, 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 
uh, clocks were just uh, introduced and so on. Yeah, that was a, we had Ajon games back in those days. I don't, I think you don't know too much about Ajon games, right? Uh, <laughs> but that was that was common back in those days. One of the best players in the world at that time, and still a very good player, Michael Adams. He was playing black in this position. Those of you who played, yeah, I guess you can see which opening this is, right? Uh, those of you who who play this opening, you will find very quickly the right the right solution. I'll ask you for a bunch of moves, just for fun, okay? Just for fun, I will ask you for like five moves here. So please go ahead, guys. Black to play. Uh, not really dragon because the pawn is on e2 still, right? It cannot be a dragon. It must be a d4 opening. If there are no pawns on the b and a file, in what, which opening does that happen? French, that's impossible. So in which opening would you have only... Is this a Kasparov Korsnoy game? No, not really. Uh, okay. So provocation, provocation, guys. What do you want to provoke here? Which move would you like to provoke? Which pawn move does White not want to play in this position? Interesting move by Michael, awesome Sarthak and Yugoslav Berserker. I like your move. Uh, it's definitely a possibility in this position. All right, let's see if somebody could find Adam's move here. Okay, so Kitty, Gordon, Crush, Tactical Magician. That's definitely the right move. Uh, but he didn't put the bishop there. He put it somewhere else. Michael, Connor, Inari, Tiger Saki and Kan King Sam, you're all very, very close. That's the right way of thinking. Uh, nobody gets to move for. Uh, I could give you a hint also. A nice endgame occurred in this game. Yeah, Michael Adams, fantastic endgame player. He was happy to bring the game into that endgame. Awesome, Owen. You're the winner, I would say. You got up to move four. Yeah, so Michael, you got up to move three, but uh, on this occasion, uh, awesome, Owen was really awesome on this one. So please go ahead. Yeah, Benko, exactly. Please go ahead, uh, Owen. Uh, let everybody know what should black play here in this position. Bishop f5. So if you don't understand provocation, you would say, hey, what a terrible loss of time. Why would I let him play e4 just like that? But it turns out that when we play e4 with white, we soften up uh, some squares also, right? These, especially the d3 squares. And that's what Michael Adams has, has noticed here. Of course, uh, Adams knew that White could not play f4. I guess some of you played bishop c8 because possibly you wanted to reroute the bishop, which is also a very nice idea. Yeah, half a point, definitely, if you play that. I'm happy to give you half a point. Maybe I could play something like knight b5 and and try to, like, keep... Oh, then I'm... You see? Provocation in action here. <laughs> I blundered knight f3 check. Yeah, now I'm in trouble, no? Probably. This is ugly for, for White. Yeah. Interesting. So maybe if you played bishop c8, that should also be okay. Yeah, I like I like that move, bishop c8. But he played in the game bishop d7. Uh, and after f4, yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Owen about this. So what do you think would happen here, Owen? Yeah, exactly, c4. Key move in this opening. If I play king h2, I'm just dropping a pawn here without any further reason. No, You can just take it and you're a pawn up and you're, you have a fantastic... Knight, exactly. It's, it, you can just take and bring in the knight and so on. So, yeah, take, exactly. This is terrible. So, white can certainly not play f4 at this point. Um, yeah, you know what I think? Probably he didn't play this because he didn't like that. And if bishop here, maybe something like knight a3, I was going to say. But, but actually, again, oh, that's a terrible move. Sorry, sorry. I have to drink more coffee. I don't see these simple moves like bishop d3. Um, I don't have this move, right? No, that's that's too too good to be true. Yeah, for, forget what I was saying. So actually, I don't know. I can't really tell why didn't he play bishop c8. That looks nice, also. Uh huh. That looks even better in my eyes. But uh, yeah. Anyway, bishop d7. That's what uh, the grandmaster played, and we should probably believe him on this. Um, White played in the game bishop e3. You can see that they're now preparing f4. Okay, Owen, please go ahead. What exactly the the problem with bishop e3? The flaw of bishop e3 is that now c3 is a little shaky. And here, unfortunately, Van der Steren, a strong grandmaster from Netherlands, he made a strategical mistake. He should have returned simply. He should have returned. Actually, the bishop might be better off on e1, believe it or not. But that must, must might be a better square. Even here, maybe bishop e1 was better in prophylactic fashion. But he played more straightforward way here. Bishop e3 and f4. 
and uh, yeah, the next move. Did you did you make it? Uh, yeah, I'll give you half a point for that. Uh, uh, who was saying Owen? I'll give you half a point. I'll take. You can take on c3 with the bishop. Maybe I should probably protect this pawn. So you're very very close. This is basically what you're looking for. Something like this. Uh, but there is another way in which you can carry it out. There is a smarter way to carry it out. Uh, okay, I see some moves there. Uh, queen c3, says Michael. Yeah, if you take play queen c3, this is, I think, you're overdoing it a little, right? Black is probably not worse here, but I'm not sure if you can if you can win this still. Uh, maybe I have chances here to, to, to save this. But what Adams did in the game, he actually managed to split these pawns. He managed to split them. So how did he do that? Knight g4 is also interesting. Yeah, exactly, Owen, knight g4. Knight g4 is also interesting. I would take, and then I would have to play g5 at some point, right? To save this pawn. Maybe he didn't like the fact that white has like some more space. So, yeah, you're right, uh, Owen, knight c4. That's what he... Yeah, we have two Michaels here. Uh -huh. So knight c4, that's what he played in the game. Very nice move because he has noticed that now the pawns are split. Uh -huh. And now... This pawn is going to leave very soon, but the other pawn is also weak. And if you remember, those of you who assisted at these uh, lectures about space advantage, you will understand this. Black can infiltrate on the queen side in this case, right? White's uh, queen side is very weak. Uh, he took with the bishop. Yeah, why do you think anyone? Why do you take with the bishop? Could you express that in words? Why take with the bishop? Why not take with the queen? What might be the difference? Ah, it's very simple. Yeah, why not trade queens? Yeah, you could say it's more pieces to attack. Exactly. I would say two reasons. Two reasons. One, we have this coming up, right? So we can win a tempo. And two, we were talking about aha, more initiative. We we're talking about infiltration, and the queen is very good when it comes to infiltration, right? So uh, it makes sense to take it this way and limit uh, limit uh, white a little. Aha. So okay, thanks, uh, Owen. Let's uh, continue. So. We have left the topic of provocation, but I still think that this game is very interesting to follow. So I'll play a few more moves here. White hurry to trade pieces. By now, they are hoping to make to make a draw in this game, but uh, that didn't happen. What did Michael Adams play? That's right. Uh, Crash, Yugoslavian, chess art, Michael, elephant, chess genius, skilled saber, JM chess. And so on, Michael Deng. Oh, the two Michaels, they found the right answer here. Metsa Mortis, Ryan, Sartak, Connor. Some people wanted to take also on B1. Interesting also that. Aha. Uh -huh. Rook A8. Interesting move by Tiger Saki. You'll probably play that also. Yeah, probably many choices in this position. Aha. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, uh, maybe the best one is what Chess Art was saying here. So please go ahead. Chess Art, which was your move here? Very, very pretty move. Rook b4. You can see the cheap trick, of course. Queen takes, rook takes b1. Check. The queen falls. And at the same time, we're attacking these pawns. No? So this is not a draw. This is definitely not a draw. White will have a very hard time to, to save this game. Uh, it was possible to play like this also. Some people were saying this. It's okay also. But why not uh, make them suffer a little more? That's probably what Adam thought when playing rook b4. Now white has some practical tasks here to, to solve. Uh, very very unpleasant situation for 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 him. So let's see. Uh, oh, we have another user here. Unpleasant for uh, I mean unpleasant for for white. Sorry, maybe I expressed myself badly. So very unpleasant for white. If rook takes, of course, how would you take back uh, chessart? The whole point, right? Chessart. Don't let us down on this one, please. What was the point of all this? Don't worry, don't worry. Your move is fine, also. But the other one was nicer. No, the other one was nicer. Take with the pawn, please. Oh, most people took with the queen here. Oh, so my my bad then. But you should take with the pawn. You have a fantastic fast pawn, right? This is this was the whole point, I thought. So you can take and then you can continue to 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 run. Um, yeah. Anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's continue. I don't understand the chat. If anyone would like to explain what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I don't follow. So 
you can take if you like chess orb, no problem. You can take with the queen, you keep a nice advantage and so on. But uh, don't you think this is a little more powerful to have a po strong passed pawn, the bishop is there helping and so on. So yeah, nice. Uh, in the game, they played bishop f1 and now Adams took on a4. Now, as you can see, the bishop was hanging, so we had to do something, no? So he just took it now, uh, exploiting the fact that this rook is also hanging. So uh, queen takes a4. Now there are big problems for white to save this pawn. You can see all the time he's toying with this idea, right? All the time he's toying with the idea of taking with a pawn uh, on b4. So white doesn't want this. They played bishop d3 in the game. And uh, now the infiltration starts here. So let's see. I think I will quiz you guys on this. Let's see if you can see how to infiltrate properly here. Uh, I must say, very aesthetic uh, uh, combination of moves here. Let's see if you can find the whole way. If you do this properly, you will win a pawn, all right? I'll give you just one minute. So, uh, oh, you're, you're learning Spanish now. Interesting. Como decir, how to say, how to say. No, Kevin, I think it's not around, not around. Uh, anyway, back to the chessboard. So let's see who can get this right. Infiltration time. You're very close to chess to whiz. You're very close. Aha. Uh -huh. Chess to whiz got up to move three. Uh, if you play like that, chess whiz, I guess I play king f3, right? Okay, did we have a winner already? Yeah, we have two winners here, Gordon and Titan Chess. Yeah, congratulations. You have walked in Michael Adams' footsteps. Uh, little chess player and Yugoslavian, you're very close also. Uh, I play Rook D1 there, little chess player and Yugoslavian. Rook D1, and if you take on E3, I take with the king, and if you take on D3, oh, I'm, I'm losing the other pawn. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, good point, good point. That probably works also. Yeah, all right, we will look at that. Anyway, please go ahead, Gordon. You you were the fastest one here, so please please go ahead. How do you continue? Let the infiltration begin. Bishop e3, there is no threat right now. We cannot take here because they can then take back, but we are just pre uh, preparing something else. Aha, bishop a2, because now we talked about this already. This is what chess art was showing us, that we can take with the pawn and later on uh, simply continue to run with the pawn. So white couldn't play like that. They played in the game rook c1. Infiltration continues. That's right. We're trying to deflect the rook from the defense of the pawn. White will have to play rook c2. And now bishop e1. Nice, no? Nice how these bishops are like infiltrating into white's camp. Rook d2. Uh, and here I think there are there were different moves. Yeah, so we can play your variation. Yeah, exactly, Gordon. That's what Michael Adams played also. And he, he won a pawn. We can come back to this position very soon. But I just wanted to talk quickly about this move that some people are saying. Very, very nice way to put your bishop. So I was hoping I could play rook d1. But I then understood that you actually win a pawn here anyway, right? You can then take on e3 maybe and take on d3. And either I lose this pawn or I lose that pawn. So... Yeah, I can't really tell what would be wrong with bishop c1, but he didn't play it. There should be a good reason why he didn't play it. So anyone, if you can see this, let me know. But I'm, I'm afraid I can't understand it myself. What, what was... Oh, maybe you're right, Gordon. Yeah, maybe the rook ending would be more difficult to convert. Yeah, we can, we can agree on that. Maybe that's what he thought. So if you get to something like this, maybe white's space advantage amounts to something, right? Maybe rook here and you could play... I don't know, rook there, or, or maybe you should gain some space or something. I think that's, you're right. Um, yeah, who said this? Yeah, somebody said this, but this is uh, very clever. Yeah, that is very clever. Yeah, you can do the Spanish class uh, some t some other time, right? We're in, uh, I also like the Spanish language, but right now we're doing chess. So could we perhaps focus on chess instead? I even lost, uh, Gordon said this. Yeah, Gordon's point was that maybe this is actually more difficult to win. Rook endgame usually gives better chances of a draw than other endgames. So maybe that's what Michael Adams thought in this case when he took on d3 instead, uh, just like Gordon was saying. So that's what happened. I think the presence of bishops means that there are greater chances to win. Okay? Uh, one last thing here. Rook p3 was played in the game. They hurried to trade rooks. 
Now, as you can see, Black has a very nice fast pawn. I just wanted to ask you one last thing here. I want to ask you one last thing. Uh, what is the last thing? Well, they ended up in this position. So I wanted to know if anyone, what about bishop c3? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Bishop c3, was that, uh, was that a good move also? Um, you wanted to play it here? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was also good. I don't know. Maybe I can play rook b8 and and protect the pawn and then try to 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 attack this pawn maybe um i think what he played was was very clear cut uh, if you ask me this was very clever to trade off white's rook so i'll ask you again i'll ask you again we reach this position what would be black's winning plan let's see if somebody can tell me that in good english black's winning plan okay Bishop c3 instead of bishop c1. Oh, we will come back to... Yeah, remind me, Sartak, about your inquiry. We'll come back to that. But let's focus very quickly on the game. Can, can anyone tell me with words? Oh, very nice. Um, yeah, something like that, Metsa. But don't do it now, right? Don't do it now. You need one more move before you do that, I suppose. Uh, because else you lose the pawn, right? Yeah, exactly. Bishop f6 first and then walk the king. Exactly. Yeah, well said. Aha, well said. Bishop somewhere, he played in the game bishop f6. Don't push this pawn because it will give white some distant chance of taking it. Just keep the pawn there. And then we walk all the way. Fortunately, the chessboard allows us to step on this square and we can enter that way, right? So we have just enough space. We don't need to like cook up a second weakness or something. We can just work on the king to queen side. Can white try to block the bishop with g4, bishop f2, bishop d3 and e5? Interesting. We can look at that, of course. I think he did. He played that in the game, uh, Titan. He did something like that in the game. He played f5 and g4. Oh, but th then you're not blocking the bishop. Okay, I see your point. You see your point. So you want to play g4 and reallocate your bishop. I think the moment when you... Well, I'm not sure. You play like this and you come here and I, I continue to run and you play bishop there. I guess I have to go down, right? Is that making sense? It's a bad idea, bishop a1. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not a uh, good player. <laughs> I, I thought that was the most natural move. I can also play this if I'm, if I'm annoying, right? If I'm annoying, I could play like that instead. I, I'll keep the bishop there. And then I will continue with the same plan, right? Slow, but safe. Um, yeah, I think this is okay with it. And nothing is wrong with bishop a1. I don't know. Somebody said it was a bad move, so uh, what do I know? But this looks uh, promising for black. All right. So that's what happened in the game. Very nice move. Uh, there is a saying, push your pass pawns. But in this case, actually, it's better to keep it here, not to let white play king c2. So it's better to keep it just like that and walk in the king. All right. So let's see. Sartak wanted to say something. Sartak was not happy about... Which move was it, Sartak, that you wanted to replace? Uh, what's today's topic? Today's topic is provocation, but we are like sidetracked here. Now we're talking about... Um, endgame technique, infiltration, and so on. So, all right, uh, Sarthak, you didn't uh, like uh, Michael Adams' conversion here, so uh, let us know when. What, what would you like to play instead? Bishop c3. Well, if Adams didn't play that, there should be a concrete reason. Well, I cannot see many reasons. I guess it's the same thing, right? Don't you think it's the same thing? Something like that, and then you take on c4. I think it's basically the same thing. Yeah, I'll play king f3. So... Bishop e2, it seems like we're back in the game almost, right? Yeah, consider yourself a winner then, Sartak, and anyone else, everyone else who played bishop c3. This looks very promising also. I guess we can later on move the rook somewhere and uh, try, try to push this pawn. Yeah, this would be nice uh, winning chances. I, can, I remember that sometimes uh, Benko players, they play this move also. Maybe at some point it could be interesting. So, yeah, I think we understood this. Anyway, how did we reach there? How did, did we get there? We looked at this position. We said that provoking e4 was very, very useful for black. Uh, bishop d7 was played here by Adams. Some people wanted to play bishop c8 also, bring the bishop this way perhaps. But his plan was also interesting. He now wants to play c4 as soon as possible and try to enter on this square on uh, d3. So that's what happened in the game. White played bishop e3. And here white played careless move. He should have gone back simply. A draw is okay for white at this moment, but f4 was careless. Now, knight c4, very nice, nice move, so that we split the pawns, and later on we had this 
nice idea of of uh, yeah bringing the rook to b4. So maybe we could continue. Okay, we could continue. We have seen so far two bishop moves. We saw Michael Adams play bishop f5, and we saw. Can I bring up the previous example? Let's see. Uh, give me just a moment. And we saw um, Pragnananda play bishop g4 here, provoking the move f3. I think this example was even easier to understand, right? Even easier to understand that this is very bad for white to uh, tactically to weaken that diagonal. So uh, maybe we should look at some uh, some other piece, some other piece uh, which is good at uh, provocation. All right, I'll bring up another example. Let's see if this time we can check some other piece which is uh, good in this sense. So you're playing now with the white pieces. This is Dimitri Andrekin with the white pieces. Dubov playing black. Try to find Andrekin's very clever idea in this position. If you play your cards correctly, you will end up with a big advantage. All right, here we go. You have one minute 20 for this, all right? Don't forget, guys, today's topic Provocation. Try to identify pawn moves that your opponent uh, wouldn't like to play. And try to find a way to force those pawn moves. Um, all right. We will look at that. Uh, uh, who said that, by the way? Guinea Pig, little chess player on Princess Mega. We will look at that. I get the point. Uh, it's actually what I thought myself. I thought that was a good move. But I think it's not that good. We will see. I get the point, Michael, tactical magician, Aniguo. 206 GM Gordon. I understand it's a very typical move, but uh, he didn't play that. And Drakin played something else. This is not a Blitz game, by the way. It's it's a classical game, just like the previous games. So he thought about this for a while, and he noticed a stronger possibility. All right. Let's see who else got close here. Um, Knight B5. Interesting. Bishop E7, I guess. Uh, Yugoslavian and Skilled Saber and Michael Ding. I play bishop e7. I bring back the bishop. I had to bring it back anyway, right? So we have only one winner here. Crush. Congratulations, Crush. You have found the right solution here. Uh, Osham Owen, I think you got the first move. And uh, some other people got the second move also. And we have uh, two winners. Metza Mortis also got it. Congratulations. So please go ahead, uh, Crush. Show everybody the very nice way of continuing here with white. Queen d3. Exactly. Why do we play this move? Well, we know that the move g6, it's not beneficial for them. It weakens the light squares, and this is the key move that Andrekin played. He's going to bring the queen to h6. I understand many of you wanted to play bishop h6. That's very, what, what can I say, typical. It's a typical pattern. But it's actually the queen which is better off there. This can only be found if we analyze for a while. And I understand you only have one minute, so it's not a lot of time. So it's so obvious. Oh, really? Uh, why not queen d2? Yeah, queen d2 is fine also. The grandmaster played queen e3. Uh, queen d2 is perfectly fine. Uh, I find it more natural to go this way because maybe there is some mission for the queen on the third rank, for example. But okay, let's not fight about that. Let's have a quick look at the other moves that you were saying. Uh, when you sacrifice in this way, when you sacrifice a pawn on h4, you can see that white played h4 at some point, and black took with the bishop. Uh, a natural plan is to play g3 and king g2. I think some people are saying this, to play rook h1. Unfortunately, black could take the initiative here. If I'm not mistaken, black could play something like f5. And if you don't take, I think you're just like a pawn down. Um, it's not so, so much, uh, it's not so dangerous if your bishop is blocked. And if you indeed take, well... Um, I have some counterplay on the f-file now. So we could have something like this. I can maybe go back with the bishop and then I can even consider some exchange sacrifice, right? All right, Michael, we will look at your uh, conclusion here. All right, your, your, your proposition here. So that's, that's the g3 move. So g3, it's very logical. In other positions, this would work very well. But I think that here, by playing f5, black is very happy to open up the f-file, which will ensure further counterplay. In the same fashion, if you take on h4, I take back. Uh, now the pawn is hanging, right? If you defend it, I think again I could consider something like f6. I think this is always the key move for black. Try to open up the game a little on the queen side, on the king side, sorry, and create some counterplay. All right. So let's see here what you were saying. You were saying knight b5. That's uh, who, who said this? Somebody's talking about this. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't see the... Why, Michael Deng says, knight b5 and knight e6, if bishop e7, then bishop x7. All right, knight b5. Let's see. Don't forget that there might be some tension here also. I don't know if that is any concern to you. If I could somehow, like, some crazy tactic like knight x5. Is, is that possible or that's very bad? My point is to take like this and take there. Uh, anyone with a sharp tactical eye? Oh, you have some interesting discussion here. Uh, maybe we should focus on the chessboard instead. You're, you're asking for the identity of one of the students here. I don't think that's so important, no? Um, I don't know, Michael. Is this, is this really convincing? It works? I don't know. I, I don't think it works. I think black is doing fine here. I'm, I'm missing my, my attacking bishop, and I have an issue with this knight also. I don't know what you want to play here. Take with the knight, perhaps. Maybe I can take over here and I can bring home the bishop or something like that. Not clear why white should be better here. Uh, you don't have so many attacking pieces uh, left, right? So that's probably not the right uh, way to play. So let's focus on what uh, Crush said, right? Crush said we should play queen d3, provoke g6, and then we should play queen e3, directing the queen towards the very weak square on h6. Black played at this point f5. So, uh, should we take or should we play something else? What do you think, guys? Take or not take? Something else, exactly. We should not take because in that case, we open up the F-file for them, right? If we take like this, they can take back. For example, just for the record, now, if you play something like this, preparing to trade bishops, anyone, what would black play here? Those of you who play the French defense, you must know about this. Exactly, Titan chess, JM chess, that's exactly what you should play. Please notice, guys, this is very important. Uh, that knight will be missed in White's camp. Black will have a lot of activity in this position. So, yeah, much better to play like Andrekin. Just ignore this. Play queen h6. Definitely, this is a key bishop, so White is very happy to trade it off. Please go ahead. Uh, who was it? Crush. Please go ahead, crush. What did you exactly? Knight e5 quickly before black gets a chance to play something like maybe rook f7 and bishop f8. We would like to trade off this defending bishop. And something interesting happened here. After bishop takes d5, uh, black played queen e8. Um, yeah, this is not so interesting, but you, you'll see. Yeah, maybe here. Maybe No, maybe it is interesting. So... Anyone, the first move that you would think of here, the first move that you would think of, uh, what is it? Okay, Titan, we will come back to your, your question. Yeah, exactly. Most, most of us, we will look at this move instantly. But Andrekin didn't play it. Anyone, a theory about why he didn't play that? Aha, you're right, Mesa Mortis. Exactly. Well, that's what I think. I, 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 I haven't asked Dubov about it, but I think that's what he would play. Queen f8, and he's targeting this pawn. And w if white tries to uh, to hang on to it, maybe we can play queen f7 and bring over the rook. I don't know. I haven't looked at this very thoroughly, but uh, it's something that you should probably avoid with white since you're playing for an attack, right? So he didn't play bishop f6. Rook d3 was proposed. Yeah, interesting move to swing over the rook. I think he did that late, though. Yeah, that's an interesting move. Uh, he played in the game bishop b3. Restriction. Now he wants to avoid knight c4, probably. Uh, knight d8 was played in the game. Queen h4, knight f7, bishop f6. Again, he, did, he didn't go for the exchange. Well, actually, he doesn't win the exchange. What would black play here? Yeah, black can give back a pawn. Exactly. g5, we give up, we give up a pawn and we manage to trade off that bishop. So, of course, now he put the bishop here instead, now that there is no exchange sacrifice. And here he played a pawn move. So, let's see here, guys, if you have to play a pawn move. Which pawn move would you play? Yeah, g3, almost, almost. Aha, he played the other pawn instead. He played f3 here so that he can put the king on f2 and bring over the rook. So, yeah, black was in trouble in this game. Uh, later on, Andrekin managed to win this game. I like it very much, this uh, example. I think it's a very clever example of how you can provoke weaknesses in your opponent's camp and later on exploit them. In this case, surprisingly enough, it's the queen, which is best of if you go with the bishop like we were discussing i can play something like rook e8 and later on i can try to play f5 uh, 
I mean, if you play something like g3, I'll go back. And if you play king g2, I will play my move f5. I think this is better than... Okay, and this this one, by the way, is also in the air. But I think this is better than the than the game because I still keep my my good bishop, right? Or knight before. Yeah, definitely. You're right. Good point, of course. One reason why he played queen e3 is probably also that he didn't want to trade off his, his uh, proud bishop here. Although the other bishop is also proud. Actually, both of them are very strong here. We had some other last comments. Uh, anyone else wanted to say something? Knight b5? Somebody was saying knight b5. Was it here? Knight b5 here, I suppose there is some tactic, no? Maybe you can play like knight xe5 and if knight e6, maybe there is knight f7. I don't know. A lot of knights dancing here, but... Um, black is okay, no? I think. Yeah, maybe this is also bad. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I think that's a tactical defense. Exactly. I think black is happy if they can like stir up the game a little because in the long run, they have a difficult position. So, um, yeah, I think he played in the right way. Uh, but I'm happy to hear any other oh, opinions here uh, about this. But I think this was the best move. Provoking g6, a move that black would never play. Please notice that in some positions, you're fortunate enough to bring a knight to defend this pawn. That's a different story. Now, that's a different story. Then you have an intact pawn structure. So, we have seen so far provocation carried out by bishops and by the queen right maybe we should see some other piece so let me see if i can find some other example that could be interesting for you um all right let me see yeah this one should be easy for you this one should be easy for you let's see game by ukrainian grandmaster elianov let's see from a structure that i think is familiar to all of you uh, just give me one moment uh one moment, please. Just let me fix the technical stuff here. Uh, okay, here we go. Provocation carried out by attacks. All right, guys. You don't get much time for this. Uh, let's see. I'll quiz you for the next uh, three moves, I think. Should that be enough? Yeah, I think that's enough. All right. So why to play? Try to get the most of this position, please. Uh, oh, something happened? The, the quiz? Oh, sorry. I think I, I did something with the quiz. Uh, please, there is a human element here. That's me. I'm sorry. I'll try to fix this, okay? Here we go. Now go for it. Yeah, no, one second is too little. Take your time, take your time. Remember the topic, please. We're talking about provocation today. We're trying to provoke moves that our opponent doesn't want to play. Typically, we're talking about pawn moves, from the opponent, I mean, and we use our pieces, rooks, knights, bishops, and queens, to provoke such moves that they would not like to play, all right? That's what we're doing here. All right, we have some winners here. Sarthak, Skilled Saber, Ryan, JM Chess, Benjamin. You got it right. And uh, some people had uh, other ideas. We're very close. O Owen, Michael, Tactical, and so on. Also interesting idea. I would say half of you got it right. Yeah, we will look at that, uh, Chess Art. Don't worry, we will look at your solution. But let's uh, talk first to Sarthak. Please go ahead, Sarthak. What was your move here rook a5 very clever move by elianov please notice this pawn structure it's not that common uh, you usually don't have a semi-open a5 like this those of you who are very uh, disciplined with uh, the study of chess openings you will know in which uh, opening variation this com comes up right anyone which uh, opening might this be Yeah, maybe Michael, like in like in Italian. Actually, I'm not sure. You made me doubt now. I was going to say it's a Sicilian until I noticed that there is a pawn on c7, so it can't be Sicilian. I think it's the Rai Lopez. The what's the name of it? The, the Berlin. I think it's the Berlin. The Berlin where they traded on c6. That's why there is no light score bishop anymore. Black took with this pawn, and later on Black has played c5. 
And at that point, white played at a3 and b4. But you have the same idea also in the Rosolimo, right? In the Rosolimo, you can also play for this idea. Very interesting idea. You gain space and you clear a semi-open a file, like in this case. Yeah, something like that. No, I would say e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. I'll give you my take on this. Knight f6, and he must have played d3 and maybe bishop c5. Bishop takes c6 and d takes c6. All right. These are the moves that I think, yeah, exactly, Michael. That's what I think. It might be the order or something else. There are so many Berlin variations. It's difficult to keep track of all of them. Anyway, back to the game. So we're talking to Sartak here. Uh, please go ahead, Sartak. I want to protect this pawn. If I go rook e8, I have a tactical problem, right, Sartak, that you noticed very quickly. Black has a tactical issue here. I would like to play this, not to commit my, exactly rook d5, and you can see that there are many things for black to worry about here. Yeah, then why a6? That's an excellent question, 206. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not the right uh, expert on the Berlin. Uh, maybe it's not then, maybe it's not the Berlin if the pawn is on a6. You're right, you hardly ever play a6 in the Berlin, I suppose. So, yeah, we can look it up for next time, or somebody can look it up. Elianov with white and Harut Yunyan with the black pieces. You can check that game and you can tell me which opening that happened in. So, meanwhile, we will continue with Sarthak here. Rook a5, hitting the pawn on e5. I could not play rook e8 due to rook d5. I would definitely not like to play b5, right, Sarthak? What would you play in that case, perhaps? Exactly, rook a1, and we put more pressure on this pawn. It will be a long term problem for black. You can see that if c5, for example, pawn takes, and again, this pawn is a little problem child for, for black. So, uh, yeah. In the game, oh, rook a6 to, to... Interesting, you have a discussion here about why black played a6. Yeah, maybe this happened much later. It's possible, yeah, that maybe they saw that the rook was... Like in this position, right? Maybe they played it recently because they wanted to do something with the rook, for example. So they wanted to liberate the rook or something like that. Anyway, back to Sartak. Rook a5, f6. That's the move that black didn't want to play. So what did white play now, Sartak? Knight h4. Exactly. Now we are working a little on the... Queen's, king side uh, weaknesses, right? Black has no uh, Berlin bishop on e6 covering those squares. Else that would be great, of course, just to trade it off as soon as it lands on f5. But there is no such piece. Uh, if you play, let's see now very quickly what other people were saying. If you play knight h4 at once, I think black would play g6. So this is what somebody talked about, right? Somebody talked about this. Uh, somebody had this uh, suggestion also. Chessart. All right, Chessart. We are all ears. What did you want to do next? I know what I would like to do. I would like to bring my knight to e6. That's the plan that I have seen. But I don't know if it's uh, working here. Uh, or maybe I could also bring the knight. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, this is also interesting. You could go back and, and you have weakened my stru structure a little, right? So, yeah, interesting. You can have a half a point for that, for that answer then, if you like. From the other moves that you were proposing here, yeah, we had many moves proposed here. Knight d2, some people were saying, I can certainly see the point. If I play b5, you have managed to provoke another weakness. No, and, uh, I, I think there is also planned with f4 at some point. But, uh, yeah, knight d2, maybe they can play something else. I don't know. What else could I play in this, in this position with black? Uh, rook e8 maybe, so that I, I protect his pawn. And I still have my dreams of like uh, transferring the knight to the kings. I don't know, is, is that uh, is that making sense? Something like this maybe, and try to move over the knight. I mean, else I'm falling asleep here if I don't do something on the king side. So that's what I would think. Anyway, let's go back to the game. Now, rook a5, that's what uh, Sartak was saying. f6, knight h4, hitting the weakness. Uh, let's jump to the game. They played in the game king h7. And uh, please go ahead, Sartak. The next move, knight f5. Queen b6. I guess it's because he needs to protect his pawn, right? We would prefer to go somewhere else, but then I guess we're just hanging the pawn. So, unfortunately, queen b6, that's not the right angle for the queen, really. So, um, anyone, could you propose a plan with white here? Uh, yeah, white's next move and plan. Okay, you're very close, uh, Michael. You're very close. Uh huh. That's illegal, but it's the right plan. Exactly, Michael. That's right. 
93 also. We have two different uh, ideas from two different Michaels here, but if we uh, pay attention to the first plan, that's what he did. Aha, I guess 93 is also interesting, but you can't play f4. Yeah, you have to play 95 first, maybe. I don't know what this means. Maybe I should play c6, no? I, should, I think this makes sense anyway, because I'm annoyed by this pressure. And as always, I'm dreaming about uh, bringing my knight to some better place. Uh, so I think actually what uh, the other Michael is saying is it's better. Aha. So uh, King H1 or King H2 in the game, Eliano played King H2. And after Rook E8, let's see if everybody is awake here. Uh, what did White play? That's right. Gordon, L206, Connor, Michael Deng, Titan Chess, Benjamin, Tiger, Saki, Michael, Chess, Art, Kite, King, Sam. Just to see if you're awake here. Or you're paying a lot of attention to the chat, perhaps. I have never played the 2200. Well, you will probably very soon, Metamortis. Don't worry. F4 to jack up the king side was interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. So this plan of F4 is actually very useful in many such structures. Um, also in the Sicilian uh, Rosolimo, right? We can come across that plan. Uh, maybe you remember the match between Carson and uh, Caruana. They would play, let's see if I can get this right. Uh, they would play the Rosolimo or something like this. And yeah, that's why this could not be Rosolimo, right? Because the pawn was already on, on C5, right? So it's not possible. But I think one of their games was something like, was it like this? I don't really remember it, but basically something like this. And he must have played like that. And the knight came came here, and this this one is there, and something like that. Well, I think I, I messed up the moves somehow, but but you see the point, right? Something like this, and then he played at some point f4, and this is this is how they got there, something like that, and put the rook here, and so on. That's like the typical way to play, right? But I think I yeah, I think I missed queen d2 and h. Yeah, sorry, I think I missed it. I I got it wrong. No, you should play first. Uh, yeah, anyone who is good with the uh, with the Rosalimo, how, how is the move order? You play knight f6, I think it's first, right? h3, you should always play so that you stop this move before you play knight c3, right? So then black plays like knight e7 and you play knight c3 and e5. I think I know what I missed. He played bishop e3 also. This move is included. And then you play like queen d2 and they don't want you to trade. And then you play knight h2. Now black is trying to bring the knight to e6 and you play f4, right? I think that's how you play it. Pawn takes, bishop takes. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Should the bishop go this way or that way? What do you think? Which one is best and why? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm the only one. I'm with crush on this. Yeah, I'm with crush. I go the other way with the bishop. Okay, sounds like also in kind King Sam. Exactly. I also go this way because I know that sometimes they castle long. So I'm happy to have the bishop there so I can bring in the, the knight and so on. That's also why I take with the bishop on f4. I could take with the rook also, of course. So if you want to go back with the bishop, it's better to take. If you want to go back, you could take with the rook instead so that you gain a move, right? But yeah, in my opinion, it's interesting to take it this way. You can put the bishop there. There is a nice game by Zhu Wenjun, the world uh, champion. She played a game like this, a very nice game, where she did exactly this plan, I think, with e5 and 96 and so on. So anyway, I was just trying to show you that in the Sicilian Rosolimo, you have the same plan, and you actually have the other plan also, the one that we were talking about. You have the a3 and b4 plan, and that's how you could get to this structure also. But anyway, never mind. Let's go back. Let's wrap up this example that we are looking at very quickly. It's this example, right? So we were with Sartak here. Uh, everybody remember what uh, White should play here, or should we maybe repeat this very quickly? I think we will repeat it very quickly. All right. Let's see who has the best memory here. Let's see who has the best memory. You get only 30 seconds for this, so I hope you paid attention. Okay, JM Chess, nobody can beat you. You're clearly the fastest one here. Crash second place. Sui Random, today Sui has been very quiet. Okay, I'm happy that you're around. Connor. Also got it. We have four winners, five winners with GM. Uh, Michael and Awesome Owen and so on. You played King H1. That's perfectly fine. I can't tell which is best. Uh, Tiger Saki, Michael, Chessart, 206, Gordon. You all played King H1. Consider yourself 
winners. Honestly, I can't see a big difference there. So, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, who will? Connor, please go ahead, Connor. You're one of the fastest here, so please carry out this little uh, strategical operation. Rook A5, pretty move. You can only play such move if you understand the concept of provocation. We want to provoke F6. The other moves were not tactically convenient. So this is what white would like to do. Now enter with a knight. Black played in the game king h7, prophylactic uh, king move. Knight f5. Unfortunately, the queen must take uh, control of that pawn. And now we get ready to push f4. So yeah, thanks, uh, Connor. Great work. King h1, I, I guess that's possible also. I can't really tell what's the difference. I think I would actually prefer this one because I don't like the fact that my king and rook are on the same diagonal. But maybe it doesn't matter so much. Let's trust Super Grandmaster Eliano on this rook e8 and f4. So very, very difficult for black this position. Please notice one interesting detail here. If black takes and white takes back, we could actually claim that both white rooks, in one way or another, they're actually involved in the, in the attack, right? This rook, in a funny way, it's helping from the queen side. It could very quickly get there. So in the game, black played rook d8 instead. And uh, yeah, white had a strong initiative. Something like this, I think, was the game. And they later brought the queen to g3 with a very strong attack. Oh, but yeah, the rook is hanging, but I'm also threatening mate. So something like that. Uh, who knows exactly the, the, the details here, but it's important that we understand the, the big picture here. They don't want to play f6 with h6 included. So that's a good moment for us to play um, rook a5 to hit this pawn. Speaking of which, when we have this situation with the two pawns, before we say goodbye today, let me show you one last thing. In the King's Indian, those of you who know about the King's Indian, uh, the, the Glek variation, uh, you can probably uh, help me on this one. When you play the Glek King's Indian, if I'm not mistaken, um, in this variation, they say H3 is not so good. Could anyone explain to me why H3 is not so good here? Oh, L008. All right, L, we will bring you up. You, you can show us. L is the fastest here. L knows this. So please go ahead, L. What would black play in this case? E takes D4, and after knight takes D4, since H3 is in, black can actually use our concept of today, right? Rook E8, provocation. Usually white would be happy to play F3, but not on this day, when with this terrible... Exactly. I can see we have a King's Indian player here, or at least somebody who knows about King's Indian. You're right, L. This is very unpleasant for white already. So probably they would have to play something like Bishop F3. And I guess it's about equal here. Uh, this is clearly not the, the way you would like to arrange your pieces. But at least you don't have to worry about the knight coming to E5. The black can play with knight C5 maybe. But uh, yeah, F3 is really bad. You can also play C6 as uh, Titan chess. You can play after f3, c6. So I would say it's completely normal in other positions. If you take, for example, the same King's Indian, and if we play e5 and we play e takes d4, this variation also exists. If I'm not mistaken, this is the only good move for white, f3, right? To control the pawn and so on. And now you can play c6, and I guess I can play something like King h1 maybe, and it's just like a normal game, right? But uh, yeah, in combination with h3, it's just terrible. So. That's the reason why in this in this kind of position, black uh, if black plays this Gleck system, if white wants to play bishop e3, they should probably just play it straight away. Don't even think about playing h3 first and then bishop e3, because then black will play in this way and they will provoke. Somehow they will provoke a weakness on, of, of, on this pawn and f3 is very ugly. So that would be a little like in our example, in our example, the one that we were looking at here, the one where White played rook a5, forcing black to weaken their pawn structure. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Thanks a lot. We will continue next week with the same topic. Thanks to Chess Dojo, Chess uh, Greg Shahadi, USCS. Uh, thanks. Bye-bye.